Hello, this is Joyce Chow for MB Anna News Video Web, and we're sitting here with a friend of mine, Michael Dean Shelton, who is a philanthropist here in the Southern California area, and we're getting ready for the Smile Gala, for right. Operation Smile. But Michael, you work with a lot of charities, and there's a lot of charities that approach you asking for your assistance. So That's one, correct. one of the things I'm always curious about is how do you select a charity? Um, well, you know, First and foremost, I think the important thing is, is that you need to identify areas mm -hmm. that you feel passionate about. For example, for me, I really focus on children, right. the environment, animals, and equality issues. Okay. And so, um, and when I say equality, that means gay and women issues as well. I kind of group those all together. So, um, so first I look to see if it's a reflection of what my values are. Okay. I think that that's the first, uh, uh, most important thing for me. Um, the second thing that's really important is how do they spend their money? Now, yeah. actually, that's a real that's a real important one because a lot of times, especially during the holiday season or all year long, people want to want their dollars to count more. Exactly, and I think that that's you know we have to be involved. We mm -hmm. definitely have to be involved with that. Um, you know, as a donor, because as you said, we want to make sure that that dollar, our hard-earned money, is going as far as possible. There's a great website that I use mm -hmm. called CharityNavigator.org, and you type in um, the name of a charity, and this organization does independent studies, so they go into the charity. You sure they're not associated with any of them? Um, no, they're not associated okay. with any of them. And whenever they give out star ratings, it's a pretty big ordeal, and it can increase the um, the financial contributions coming in. So, um, and they make sure that the charities are registered with the IRS. That's a very important one. You know, make sure that they have a tax ID number. Um, because, you know, um, if you give money to an organization that does not have a tax ID number, you can't write it off. And so, oh, yeah. yeah, that could cause a few problems. That could cause a few problems. Um, so, you go into Charity Navigator, type in the name of the charity, um, and then they have little pie graphs to talk about the charity, about the uh, donations, um, about how they spend their money. Now. The government encourages um, they encourages twenty six and a half cents or less mm -hmm. for administrative costs. Okay. Anything higher than that, I tell people no. I now, mean, now is that a? I mean, for you, is that a high barometer or is that a low barometer? I, um, to me, no that's idea. too high. Okay. And so I I'm, I normally only associate with charities that um, spend twenty cents or less okay. on a, on on administrative costs. Because I mean, there's a lot of great charities that spend yeah. ten cents. You know, we're not in this to get rich. Actually, that's pretty low, isn't it? Ten cents. Yeah, ten to fifteen cents. But um, you know, it's just that they're very lean and they know what they need to be done. I mean, you you have volunteers do a lot of the work. Mm -hmm. You know, um, salaries are low because you know once again, they're, the people that work there shouldn't be doing it for money. That's right. my first. You know, right. that's that's what I firmly believe. So um, you know, make sure that they have the twenty six and a half cents or lower. I really do encourage people not to give above that. And so, um, Charity Navigator is really great because they give them star ratings. And um, uh, I also look at the star rating. If they're two stars, don't give. You know, I mean. What does the star rating mean? Um, it's a, it, there's a, a number of factors that go into it. It talks, you know, they deal with um, financial contributions, how they meet their budgets, um, their staff turnover, how they spend the money. So there's all these different factors wow. that go into it. So. Um, you know, like I said, two ratings or below, two stars, I just don't give. Um, because, you know, I want to make sure that, once again, my money counts. Um, but it's pretty easy to, you know, to look at the site and, and figure it out. Now, they do not um, uh, audit those charities that raise under a million dollars. So a lot of those charities, you know, if there's a smaller charity, then it won't really count. But tax, IR, tax records or IRS records are open to the public. So you can call call that charity, ask them to see their their tax records because those are public records. So um so I look at that, um, and then the other thing I really look at, which um I kind of sometimes get into a little trouble, oh, with, no. and so but um I What's encourage that? I encourage people. Does their mission reflect? Um, does their fundraising events reflect the true mission of their nonprofit? Let me Actually, give you a couple. That makes a lot of sense, though. Yeah. So let me give you a couple of examples. Um, in LA, there was recently a children's charity that threw an adult-themed pool party sponsored by a vodka company. Now, this is a children's charity. Does that really reflect a charity? It, truly, you need to look at that because, I mean, whenever you have a charity function, you should see the things that you're there to raise money for in the sense like if this is a children's charity, there needs to be children there. They can't be there if there's vodka served and half-naked people running around. You know, it just doesn't. Oh, it really make... was an adult party. Yeah, it really was an adult themed pool party, and so you have to wonder. 
you know, but what what they reflect. Oh. But don't you think that, I mean, even if it's a children's charity, that adults can raise funds and donate it to the kids, or... Right, but it shouldn't be sponsored then by the organization. It should be okay. privately raised. Private, and privately raised, and then oh, know. I see what I see. What exactly, you're talking about. but the, you know, um, you know, and there was also another charity that um, focused on equality, for example, that held fundraisers that were for twenty-one and over. Now you have to ask yourself, when did inequality stop affecting people under the age of twenty-one? Oh, and so. You know, and I'm really harsh about it. <laughs> yeah, but, but there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, there's a lot of people. I mean, you're dealing with your personal finances, right? And you're exactly. giving it to organizations. There's a lot of people that wouldn't invest in companies that I don't know had uh, young children, you know, making clothes or exactly. did, you know blood diamonds or something like that. So I don't. This isn't any different. Right, and um, you know, and I think that we have that responsibility because once we start pulling back from those charities, and once they start hearing from us, you would hope that they would start changing their course of their fundraising. Mm -hmm. Because you know, like let's look at Operation Smile. There will be children present tonight, and so you know, they do serve wine, for example. Right. But that's that's okay. I mean, that's not you know, hard liquor is a whole different story when there's children around. But but, uh, but there's probably going to be children here that who've who've had their smiles changed, right? Exactly. Which I always it, it brings meaning. To the exactly. Yeah. yeah, and you have to look at a charity when they do do the charity events. Like, you know, are there AIDS patients for AIDS people, right. you know, AIDS surgery? Are there actual patients that they've helped? Because donors want to see how their money is, you know, being used. Mm -hmm. And the only way that they're able to see that is to hear the stories of the people that their money is going to help. And if that's from children, sometimes, you know, especially when it comes to medical charities, you know, it's sometimes hard to see the tangible effects. You know, right, because like it, you're developing in research. Exactly. Right. Yeah, but you know, you still want to see those people, like if it's cancer or AIDS, you still want to see those people that are participating in those lab studies or those research mm -hmm. studies at the events. So, um, you know, so I, you know, kind of look at those sort of things. The other big thing for me is when I look at a website, is their phone number listed? Right. And is their address listed? And how quickly, when you call, do these people call you back or answer all your questions? Uh -huh. um, you know, because like I said, if we're giving, if I give five thousand dollars to a charity, right. I want to be able to know that I can look at their website and clear or their materials and call them and ask them questions when I when I want, and they need to respond back to those. Um, because you know this arrogance sometimes that goes on with charities shouldn't exist, and um, you know because we're the ones that create the you know by 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 actively being involved and by giving money. So um, you know, and there's a lot of charities that don't have that information listed. And so, and um, once again, if they if they don't have that information listed, then I don't give. And so, you know, and like I said, it's our responsibility. It doesn't matter if you're giving a dollar or if you're giving a hundred thousand dollars. You need to look and make sure that your money is going for the right purposes. So, yeah. you know, one of the things that people always kind of I, I won't say fall into the trap of is they see all these things and they say, if you buy this, we help support this charity, right? But you have no idea how much of what you're, you know, well, actually, breast cancer awareness is coming up. It's like, by doing that, how much actually goes to help breast cancer? Would you be better off just sending money to the Breast Cancer Society? Yeah, well, I think that there's, that's a two-fold question. One, um, you know, I have done some of that product marketing before. Right. Like, a few years ago for AIDS Research Alliance, we designed wine that was sold. I made sure on the back of the label it told you how much money went to AIDS Research Alliance. I think it was like a dollar twenty-five right. or a dollar fifty. Um, a lot of you know, like breast cancer, as you said, is right. coming up, and Susan B. Coleman has the market on that. You oh, see pink does she ever? And so it's all over the place. You know, and I don't know how much of that information is written on there, but I think that you're kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place. Well, you know, on actually on. The um, breast cancer, they're actually pretty strict on that because I've spoken with people that okay. wanted to do something for breast cancer and there was a fixed percentage minimum that they had to, right. you know, first of all, I think it had to be a special edition and I don't even remember the percentage, I think it was like 25%, I mean, right. it, it was not, you know, like 1%. It was, right. Yeah, yeah and I think that the, the, the product marketing, which is a relatively new thing mm -hmm. in, in nonprofit world, um, is a great idea because let's just say you can't afford to give a $15 contribution, right. but you need a potato peeler that, you know, Susan, Susan B. Coleman has a pink one that is by a major, you know, right. so and so you can go and buy that, you're still donating to charity, but then you're getting something for your house, and so, which, and you're also showing other people that you help support that charity because you have something 
from that. Exactly. And I think, yeah, and I think later on down the road when you're able to afford it and you see that pink candle on that that thing, it's going to trigger your thing. You know, I should give money this season to, you know, Susan B. Coleman, for example. And so I think that it's it's an ingenious marketing mm-hmm. tool. And so, um, and but like I said, I mean, sometimes you don't know how much that money goes. But um, I think the long-term effects on that is more positive for the nonprofit. I, than, I think you're right on that. In so. fact, tonight what I wore was this little bracelet I picked up from a gifting suite. Oh, yeah. We were charity charms, yeah. right? Oh, yeah, yeah. This one's for Operation Smile. Oh, nice. And, yeah, so That's... the different charities, you know, they have, they, can, they have their logo on here and, People come wearing for the events. No, exactly, and um, yeah, and I think, like I said, I think it's a it's a brilliant tool that they've done with that, and um, and you know, I encourage people to do that because now we're seeing more and more companies lining up to do it. In fact, like Kentucky Fried Chicken in May had a um, million dollar or four million or five million dollar challenge where they had pink buckets for Susan B. Coleman. Oh, that's great! And so you know, and just making sure you ask for those things. I mean, I I'm very firm about that. You know, whenever I'm in a store, I'm more likely to buy a product that benefits a charity. Do you know what I am too? Yeah, yeah. and so um, and I think that's just important for people to realize, and it doesn't cost any more to do so. Well, especially if it's the same price. It's, it's the same price. Yeah, you know, a lot of these companies donate their costs to do that for that yeah. charity. So, and it's a win-win situation for everybody involved.